Whatever you're experiencing, you are already full. You are complete. Everything is whole. There is nothing missing, missing here. It's complete. But that's what desire doesn't understand. You always desire. You desire because you think, think that there is something missing, that you have to get something into your life for yourself or for others. You feel you have to do something to achieve some state of experience. But you always only end up where you already are. You are complete. And that's why desire is problematic. Desire is so problematic because in the act of desiring something, you are already suffering. You create the suffering. You create it because you feel something is missing. Through desire, you create the illusion that something actually is missing, while it isn't. Imagine, it's so completely full, your experience of your inner self, of the world, it is complete. It cannot hold any more. Whether you're experiencing nothing in meditation or you experience the joy of life, a relationship, a great possession, whatever it is, in every moment it's already completely full. But desire will never understand this. Desire for relative things, for experiences, whether that's something material or something in a relationship. Desire will always seek something. And it will create the illusion through first creating the sense of lack that is then by acquiring the object satisfied. It will create the illusion that you actually achieved something. But the desire is already the illusion. So why, when you see that desire is only an illusion and the lack of anything is only an illusion, you become more free of desire. It is not simple because we are we have trained ourselves and society has trained us to desire, always desire something. Whether that's a career, a better job, a better relationship, a better car, better house, better apartment, whatever it is for you right now that you think is on the horizon for you that will, once you achieve it, make you happy. It's not going to happen that way. Because once you achieve it, there will be an emptiness. A feeling of, oh yeah, I've always already been here after the initial high of achieving the thing that's temporary happiness. Then how should you deal with desire? And in spirituality, on the spiritual path, there is one solution for desire. And that is to redirect your desire. You can use your tendency to, des to desire something in order to progress spiritually. You use desire and say to yourself, I desire nothing more than knowing myself as God. Knowing yourself as God has to become your highest desire. It's like Nothing else compares. Everything is secondary. So you have to really desire that you achieve the insight of who or what you truly are. Like that has to become your life's mission. Everything else has to be at least aligned with that goal. It doesn't mean you cannot spend time doing other things. You will have to work, you will have to manage your relationships and maybe have a few hobbies to keep yourself balanced and happy. But 
this is all done. Everything you do is then done under the goal of achieving enlightenment. You can do things and do them in the mindset of this is serving the purpose of me becoming enlightened, me knowing myself as God. You can practice mindfulness during every action, during everything you do during your day. You can always keep in the back of your mind the idea, this is God. This moment I'm experiencing, this is God. This is it. There is no other. This is complete, whole, unconditional love for myself. And that's why I created everything. And once you live your life under that idea that your whole life is, or your whole life's desire is directed towards achieving enlightenment, every other desire will fall away. Because once you have practiced this for a while, you will realize that all other desires are more like temporary deviations from the path that you are on. From the real, from the only desire that will actually give you what you are looking for. Because all other desires will only lead to temporary happiness. And then you are back in the same cycle. You will look for the next best thing again. You will desire something else. It will naturally come up. Your mind, my mind cannot do anything else than create the sense of lack because you are identified with something, with something that you are not, that is seemingly separate from everything else. And your whole life is trying to fill that void that you illusory created for yourself. It's an illusion. You are not a separate being that has to go out into the world to get something out of it. But as long as you live in that illusion, you will desire to become whole and complete. Just that in most everybody, this is directed towards smaller goals, towards seeking this wholeness, this completeness in some things, in some objects, in some experiences, in a relationship. But this is only a projection of this primary illusion onto, oh yeah, I'm, lack I'm lacking this certain specific thing and that will make me complete. But actually the only thing that will make you complete and love everything unconditionally is knowing yourself as your true self, as God, as the oneness. And once you do that, once you direct all of your desire towards this goal, your life will fall in line with that. And desire will no longer be a problem for you. That is because you have discovered the illusion of being separate and the illusion that something would be missing. Because you just have to look, just look, this very moment you're experiencing, where would you put something more? How could you add anything, like fundamentally, not relatively? You could rearrange things in your experience, yes. You can have different kinds of experiences. But do they really touch you? Do they really mean anything to you, like deep down? Or are they just different kinds of experiences? And yes, while others 
might be more enjoyable than other experiences. The constant chasing of those things will only drive you deeper down this tendency on the cycle of desire and fulfilling your desires and then you get at the end nothing out of it. And this also doesn't mean you cannot do things that are in line with your highest desire of achieving enlightenment that are also beneficial for your, so, so to say, relative life, for your experience of your ego self. That's also possible. It doesn't mean you don't work anymore or, um, or earn money to buy certain things that are like really beneficial. You can still do those, but you will do them in the knowing that they are not going to make you happy. You are sparing yourself the disappointment. And through that, you are actually increasing the enjoyment, which is, you could say, <laughs> a paradoxical situation, but that's what's going to happen. As you are practicing the, to remain in the knowing that this is God, this moment right now, this everything, everybody, every animal, every human being, every plant, every moment, every experience, every state of consciousness, it's all you, it's all God. And when you practice that, a huge appreciation comes for what you acquire also, for what you achieve, for what you do. And yes, it improves your quality of life, it increases your enjoyment and your ego, for your ego that's all that counts, that's all what it's about. And so I hope these tips on desire help you to maybe get the insight of what is driving your life so far and how to constructively direct it towards the goal of enlightenment. Make it your primary goal and then do everything in the light of achieving that goal and that will make you happy. Or it will erase the illusion that you need anything to be happy, that you're not yet in this very moment whole and complete. Hope this helps. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.